Now, I'm back in the full swing of things here on the homestead. After being gone two and a half weeks, the longest that I've ever been away from here, and the longest that I've ever been away from my wife. And it feels so good to be back here. However, I see a whole bunch of things that need to be done. I must admit, doing the chores day after day on a farm or homestead, well, sometimes they can get a little monotonous. But it's good to take a break and get away when you can. But dude, when you come back, it feels so good to get back in the swing of things, back in the routine, back to being productive, producing something with your hands, working with the creation, working with the plants and the animals, and getting some exercise in at the same time. It feels really good. It is really nice having everybody back on the homestead. So we all have our individual chores and we can focus on those. I don't have to do them all myself. And uh, I can, you know, just take care of my guinea keys. So that's what my responsibility is right now. It's hard to catch them. Cause they're super fast, faster than any chicks I've, we've ever had. <sighs> I'm picking them all up out of here because I've had a problem with them having pasty butt and I've lost several to pasty butt and it's just whenever their poop gets stuck to their rear end and then they can't poop anymore and they die. So I've had to keep a really close eye on them. So I take them inside and wash them off and use the hair dryer to fluff them back out and bring them back out here. And some of them are doing fine. Like this one, it's doing pretty good. So it's not having any issues.
come here. So this one right here is doing good. It's not all pasted up. Uh, actually, every single one of them had pasty butt at one point. And one time I came in here and I cleaned them all off and I even clipped the feathers down around the vent so it would be less likely that it would get all pasty. So this one's doing good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here to keep them separate. Come here. This is my first time raising guinea keeps. <laughs> like the first time with anything. You learn a lot doing something the first time. It's not my first time with chicks with pasty butt. But normally it resolves itself a lot faster. And I've been doing all the things like giving them probiotics in their water and electrolytes and having clean bedding and all of I've, I've done everything I could think of. But like I'm just <laughs> still having to go wash butts off. But not as many as I was. I was talking to one of my friends the other day. They have guineas. And I told her I was having to wash guinea butts and she goes guineas just love to die this is her sentiment They're like they just they just die a lot right, what are your experiences with raising guineas let me know let me know if there's anything else i should be doing because i really want to learn look at this one right here it just closes its eyes like that feels so good when we get it all cleaned off Fluff it out with the hair dryer. Meg. Maggie. Hey, Meg. No, your name, no. I'm glad to be back on the homestead. Wanted to see Mom and Micah, but also to see Nutmeg and all my other goats. It's really glad to, I'm really glad to be back. Can you imagine not having goats and all these animals? How would your life be? You'd miss it. <laughs> My wife did a fantastic job of keeping the homestead going while I was away, taking care of the turkeys, the ducks, the chickens, the goats, the dogs, the cats, all those animals, keeping them alive. However, with everything that we have going on here, one of the lessons that you can learn pretty quickly is that it's, it's too much for one person to handle all the other things that go along with the homestead. So she did a fantastic and awesome job of keeping the main things going, the animals alive and going. But there's so many other things from the grass and the little projects here that it's just too much for one person to do, especially if you're pregnant. So the grass has been ridiculous. I've been mowing and weed eating and weed eating and weed eating. And I still have more to do, like this area right here started it. And as I was weed eating right here, I came across a copperhead and I was like, oh man, don't want a copperhead. A venomous anything that can cause harm, especially with having children around. So I had to do what I had to do to the copperhead. For the past few weeks, Lacey's had our meat ducks in here, and they've done a great job eating up all the different vegetation that had grew in this area. And then as they were doing so, they were getting what they needed from the plants, but they were also leaving behind 
their fertilizer, their natural fertilizer, AKA poop. <laughs> and after they did their pooping sessions <laughs> all around in here, Lacey came and added some pine shavings on top, all in hopes to create some nice humus to grow better garden plants in for next year. You really did do a great job of taking care of things while I was gone. Thanks. I know it's not practical for you to move around these chicken tractors every day like I was doing before we left, especially with being pregnant. But you did a fantastic job of just improvising and making things work. So I yeah. appreciate that. You made that look a lot easier <laughs> than what I did. Because that rope is really skinny and it hurts your hands. So yeah, you do it better than me. Well, we're going to get back to moving them around. This year we're doing a land Sabbath as well as a soil regeneration combination project. And it's really neat to see these areas that I've been working on all throughout this year. We've been working on, we've been moving chickens and ducks all through these beds that were, our, were garden beds in the past. And one of the things that we noticed when we did the soil testing, going into this year, knowing we were gonna let it rest and work on the soil is that our nitrogen is super low. And I was like, wow, even after fertilizing all the time, it was still low, wow. But you know what? there's been some really good indicators to show that we are making some progress. Let me show you. And this is really, really exciting to see. As we have let the weeds and everything just kind of grow up, we brought the goats in to eat the high things. Then we brought the chickens in and ducks in to eat the low things. And all the while they both were adding fertilizer like I was just showing you a little bit ago. And then after that, we added a number of things, just organic matter. We added chicken feathers and other things from processing as well as hay and, and leaves and other things. And as you can see, there's a lot of progress being made. We have really heavy clay here, but you can see this isn't clay. This is some good stuff. And also right here, another good sign is lamb's quarters. This weed is an indicator that your soil has good levels of nitrogen in it. So I am so excited to see this weed. And you can also, you can also eat it. It's pretty good too. And with lamb's quarters, you know, you could eat it raw just like Mike did, but most of the time you're gonna wanna cook it just like you would spinach. And especially whenever the plants get taller, you wanna use just these top pieces because they'll be more tender and it just gets more tough as you go down the plant. And in the past here, this hasn't been a plant that we would typically see a lot of. We would see a lot of these kind of plants that are right over here. Here we have a lot of curly dot, as well as horse nettle. And do you know of any uses for either one of those? Well, Doc, you can pull a piece off and if you're getting bit in the garden by something you can take it and just mash it up and get the juices going and rub it on there and it's really good seeing you with the green juice it's really good for um, ant bites stings things like that to take the sting out but if you try that with horse nettle you're gonna be worse off because they're pretty thorny <laughs> but they're also soil indicators as well and they tell a different story both of these weeds let you know that you're dealing with some compacted soil and some hard pan and with us having heavy clay here and in this area that we haven't been able to bring in the animals and do the system that I just talked about we're having those issues so we're gonna have to work on that here you can see the soil right here is not like what I was showing you over there <laughs> And one important thing about the horse nettle that you need to know is that it is poisonous. Now, I know it can be used in herbalism 
um, for certain issues but me personally I would never use it on my own because it is poisonous and especially the berries that these uh, these plants produce it can be very toxic to children so to make sure that you can identify it and tell your children and you adults not to eat it at all and that just adds to another reason why you should be very familiar with the various things that are growing so that way you know about them you know what's available to use but also what not to use yep. You like it that much? I just eat a little bit every day. And right here is another little weed to take note of. Broadleaf plantain. And one of the things that this weed tells you about your soil is that it is usually acidic. So this will be a good indicator of where you can grow blue, things like blueberries at. And it's a really good medicinal weed too. We use this for all kinds of cuts, scrapes, anything else. And just like the curly dock, the yellow dock out there, you can take this and chew it up a little bit, get the juices flowing, and put it right on uh, any kind of welt from you know, ants or mosquito bites or anything, and it'll just... Wasp. Yeah. You, you got know. stung by a wasp before, actually a couple times, and plantain has helped out a lot. It'll take out the inflammation. You can also, if you feel like you're getting sick, you can go pull some out of the yard, make a tea out of it, and drink it. And really, the great thing about plantain is there's no known toxicity levels, so you can't poison yourself using plantain. Like we're on the hunt or something here. I call him Batman. <laughs> Hang in there, Batman. No, you're not happy about this. <laughs> we need you. We just need a couple more females. All right. Well, I gotta use you, but we got a couple right here. It feels so good to be back into the full swing of things here on the homestead. Yes, even the mundane day-to-day -day chores that has to be done. But it's so exciting to also come back and see my favorite weed growing in the garden. Not that I'm going to be smoking this or anything, but my favorite weed because not only is it edible, it's also showing me that what we're doing is paying off and hopefully will help us to produce even more yummy edibles next year for next year's growing season. And the black ocelorps that we gathered up, well, they're in the garden hoping 
Hopefully they'll help me with producing some more of this stuff right here by adding their manure and coming through and eating the grass. And we also plan to reproduce. Those are really, really good egg layers. So I'm hoping that they'll help us to produce some more flocks of black ocelorps next year. And we also plan to also offer some of those as well as some of our other breeds to the Abundance Plus marketplace. So you'll just have to check out the information on that in the show notes below. Well, I got a lot more work to do here. See you next time.